Well, hello there. Welcome in. How are you doing? <laughs> are you having a great summer? Today I have a bunch of new makeup to try and I'm really looking at it from the perspective of is this good for older women and more mature skin? I'm going to be giving the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Foundation a try. This is not new, but it's new to me. This is a skin milk don't know what that means, but we're going to find out today. I picked up the Tarte Ultra Creamy Concealer. <laughs> Have you guys heard about this? You know, the Tarte Concealer is just such a legendary product. Now they've come out with a creamy version. I'm going to try that today. I just picked this up from Ulta. I have a new eyeshadow palette from the Ulta Beauty brand. I've never tried anything from Ulta, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to give this a try. You can see the colorway right here. Very, very pretty. And I've got some more things that I've pulled out of my stash that I haven't used in a while and I can't wait to revisit. If you're new here, a very special welcome to you. I'm so glad you stopped by. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50 where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. I hope you'll consider subscribing while you're here and make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you're interested in more makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 and over 60 woman, stop by prettyover50.com. There's a lot more great information just waiting for you there. Before we get started, this is a pasta spoon. I picked it up at the dollar store for a buck. Best back scratcher ever. I've done my morning skincare and of course my sunscreen and on my lips I have the City Lips Clear. This is their plumping lip gloss. This seems to be my favorite and I've tried a lot of them. Neutrogena also has one that they've just relaunched. It comes in kind of a crystal looking, of course it's plastic, container and that's the one that I keep in my purse. It does plump my lips but I don't think it's as effective as this one. This one is still my favorite. This is a little bit more expensive so if you're interested in trying it you might wait until they have a special because they have them quite often. But again this is the one that stays on my makeup table and really is my favorite. For primer today I'm going to be using the L'Oreal Blurring Face Primer. This is from their Age Perfect line. I've been using the heck out of this as a matter of fact, I really haven't used anything else in quite a while. It just does what it's supposed to do. It creates a great canvas on my skin and it really does blur out my complexion and make it look a lot smoother. For eyeshadow primer, I'm going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow primer. This is in a little travel size or sample size. By golly, if you want to try this, get the sample size or whatever size this is. It's only $12 or $15 and I think it would last a year. It is so potent and you need so very little. One of the things that I need to be very careful about with this particular primer is using too much. This right here, that little tiny dot, is almost too much for both of my lids because it's so very opaque. If I get too much on my lids, it makes my lids look wrinklier, so I have to be careful with that. However, it is an excellent base for eyeshadow, and I thought it would be good to use with this new Ulta palette today. You can see how very color correcting it is. If you have lines or veins or discoloration on your eyelids, this really does cover them up. Or underneath my eyes to correct the dark circles, I'm gonna use the Pixi Eye Brightener. This is in the color Peach. Very affordable and very good. You can see how much that knocks down my purple circles really quickly. I'm going to use the Shady Slim Brow Pencil. This is either in the color blonde or taupe. I'm not sure because the writing has worn off on the pencil. We start at the bottom of my brows and get that line defined first and then just fill in the rest very lightly. This is the Blushing Blooms palette from Ulta. It's a 12 pound palette as you can see and I'm not sure if I've ever used an Ulta product before. I can't think of anything right off the bat. However, I saw this when I was in my local Ulta just recently, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give that a try. I know there are a lot of people that really like the Ulta brand. I haven't used anything from them, so we'll dive into this palette and see how it works out. I'm gonna start with this cream color right up here in the corner, and that's gonna go all over both lids just to put down a base of color. Now I'm going to dip into the soft pink and that's going to go in the transition area right above my natural crease. This is really a pretty soft kind of shell pink, cool pink tone, and that's gonna go right above my natural crease. Now I'm going to dip into this light taupey brown. I think that's one of the reasons that I was attracted to this palette is that although there are warm tones in here, the browns all look to be cool toned to me and I like a cool tone brown. So this brown is going to go right underneath that pink into my crease area just to define that 
a little bit more. I'm going to bring that down to the outside corner of the movable lid. And you can see how that's defined my crease area just a little bit. Now I'm going to go right above that lighter taupe color and dip into this and just really build up that crease and outside corner of my eye. Just want to keep it really to the outside third of my eye and down onto my movable lid. Now I'm going to take my BK Beauty 201 brush and just blend all those colors together. Not a lot of blending needed. These colors are very, very soft and subtle. Even that darker brown really doesn't have a whole lot of pigment to it. Now I'm going to take a flat brush, dip it back into that darker brown. I'm just trying to get more pigment into that crease area and down onto my upper lid. So I'm just going to tap that right in the crease area and bring it down onto my movable lid and then across a little bit along the lash line. And I want to put it along my lash line to kind of soften up the area where my eyeliner is going to go. Back in with that blending brush and just blend that out. For the lid color, I'm going to go into the soft shell pink down here in the corner. The difference between this pink and this pink is there's a little shift in the shade and this one has some shimmer to it. I'm just going to get it on my finger and tap that right across my lid and just softly blend that in to the crease color. For the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Foundation, I don't know how this is going to go, you guys. I picked it up in the color Fair 520. So let's see what it looks like on the back of my hand. I think that'll be a pretty good color match. We'll see how it looks. So I'm just going to dot this over my skin. Wow, it feels really, really light, almost watery. This might be a good foundation for the summertime if it has a real fresh look to it, hence the name, Clean Fresh. So I'm going to start blending that in with my BK Beauty. This is their 101 brush. I really like this for foundation. It just does a really nice job. So it's blending in really easily. It feels very, very light. And again, like I said, it feels almost watery. So definitely not heavy on the skin. Now I'm just going to press that in with my Sigma sponge. Okay, you guys, <laughs> here's what I can say about this foundation. It just doesn't look that great. There's really not a lot of coverage, and it doesn't feel moisturizing on my skin. It feels almost chalky or powdery. It's really weird. And can you see right here how it's just all patchy? and not blending in. It's really unusual. The primer I used before I put this on is excellent. It has done so well with all my other foundations. This just is not going on well at all. It's kind of polka dotty all over my face and it just, gosh, it just doesn't look good. I'm not sure what the problem is, but gosh, it just doesn't look nice at all. I'm not sure what to do to fix this. It looks really uneven and really patchy. It's making my skin look dry and my skin is not dry. Okay, makeup emergency management. I went and rinsed off my face. I'm telling you that foundation looked terrible and I'm going someplace later so I couldn't keep that on. What I replaced it with is the Revlon Color Stay. This is such a good foundation. It's at a drugstore price. I really, really love it. I'm in the color 200 Nude and I really like it. It looks so much better on my skin. So this is the little product that saved the day. I'm so excited to try this Tarte Ultra Creamy Concealer. I've heard so much about it, although I don't know that I've seen a review on it. I've just heard about the concealer itself. I picked it up in the color 12 Neutral. They have a ton of colors in the display in my local Ulta, so I really don't think that if you wanted to try this that you would have a hard time finding a color match. Again, nice doe foot applicator. This is one of those bigger buck foots, as Emily Noel would say. So I'm just going to start with a couple of dots. Wow. A lot of product there underneath my eyes. This is my BK Beauty 205 brush. I really like this for concealer. I got it in a lighter color because I like my under eyes to look a little bit brighter than the rest of my face. Just because I get so much shadowing from the loose skin around my eyes that having a little brighter color underneath there I think really helps my eyes look a little bit fresher and more wide awake. 
All right, it does feel a lot creamier than the original formula. Of course, that's what it's all about. So I'm just gonna tap it in with my fingers here. I'm liking the color on my skin. It's just about the right amount of brightness that I like. It does have nice coverage. Wow, you guys, <laughs> that blended in so beautifully. It looks really, really good right now. I don't know how long it's gonna stay this good, but you can see it right here. It blended in really easily. It looks terrific right now. So fingers crossed, this might be a really good one. We'll see. I'm gonna temp fade and go ahead and set it with my Fenty Lavender Powder. I'm just gonna use the tiniest bit. It just seems like it works so much better for me when I do set my concealer down. So a little bit, and then I just really coat that brush in the lid to make sure that that powder is dispersed. Tap off any excess and then just place it underneath my eyes. Wouldn't it be great if this was really a good concealer? You guys, I'm telling you what, this looks so good right now. I'm really curious to see how it's gonna look by the time I'm done with my makeup because you know, sometimes concealers just look great in the beginning and then they crease up and look horrible. But right now, really, really good. For blush, I'm gonna use one of these little ColourPop blushes. I love these blushes. This is their Super Shock Cheek Line. This is the color Prenup. If you haven't tried these blushes and you're a blush girl, I can highly recommend these. They come in a few colors. They feel so good on the skin. They're so creamy, kind of bouncy. It's just a yummy formula. And this color in particular is just the prettiest cool pink. These blushes are so pretty. They blend in so well. Just a really terrific product. Okay, so I completely forgot to put on my bronzer. We'll do it now. This is the e.l.f. bronzer. This is in the color Forever Sunkissed. I really like this color. It's a very soft, cool tone and just looks really pretty on the skin. We're doing it kind of backwards today, but we'll see how it works. See what a beautiful bronzing color that is? It's so pretty. If you haven't started contouring or bronzing underneath your chin, you might want to give it a whirl. The reason I like it is that it really creates a shadow underneath my chin and kind of hides that whole double chin thing. It's kind of a little optical illusion. Now I'm just going to take my sponge and press those products into my skin, really paying attention to around the edges so that it blends into my foundation more seamlessly. For highlight today, I'm gonna to use the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I got this, gosh, maybe a couple of months ago. I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun to play with. Sometimes what I do is I put a couple of dots on my cheekbone area before I ever put my foundation on. It kind of creates sort of a glow within look. It's really, really pretty. So today I'm just gonna put a few dots right along the cheekbone there. And I always put a little bit on the front of my cheeks and then just tap that in with my finger. To finish off the eyes, I'm gonna use my Sigma Essentials palette and dip into this color Snow right here. And that's just gonna go right underneath my brow just to highlight that area really, really gently. This is a very pigmented formula. And then into the inside corner of my eye where it gets pretty shadowy in there. You can see the difference in how it brightens up this side compared to this side. Now I'm going to use the Milani Prep Set and Glow. This just gives a nice, beautiful, glowy finish to the skin. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. For eyeliner today, I'm going to be using the Stila Pencil. This is in the color Espresso. I'm going to use this to line along my upper lash line as well as tight line. The reason I want to use brown today is because my makeup look is a little bit softer. This palette is a very, very soft palette, not a lot of pigment, and I want to keep the eyeliner just a little bit more soft than the usual black I wear. Start with a tiny wing on the outside corner and bring that along my lash line. Now that I have that eyeliner placed, I'm going to take a tiny little angled brush. This one is from Sigma. It's called their Winged Liner Brush, number E06. And then I'm just going to smudge that line out along my lash line 
because that skin up there is wrinkling, crinkly, and getting a straight line is not going to happen for me. So I'm just going to smudge that out, and when I get to that little wing area, I'm just going to flick it up. Now I'm going to use that same pencil to tight line, and that's just running that eyeliner right at the base of my lashes. Now I'm going to curl my lashes, use my L'Oreal Voluminous Primer, and my Maybelline Sky High Mascara. I love this stuff. <laughs> And I'll be right back. For lips today, I'm going to use the Maybelline in the color Born With It and the LA Girl Perfection Precision Lip Liner in the color Pinky. Both of these are such a pretty cool tone pink. So the lip liner is right here and the lipstick is right there. Isn't that a pretty combination? Here we have the finished look. Well, that was kind of a mixed bag today, wasn't it? Gosh, we had some winners and some losers. I haven't been more disappointed in a makeup product and I can't remember when. This looked terrible on my skin. Now, if you use this and you love this, that's great. But for my skin, it was horrible. I would say that this is probably the worst foundation I've tried in the two years I've had my channel. It just looked terrible. It hardly had any coverage. It gave me that polka dot pores. It was uneven and patchy. It clumped up in areas. It made my skin look dry. It felt dry. It just was a mess. So this CoverGirl Clean Fresh, I can say from my perspective and my experience today, this is just not a good choice for mature skin. Of course, the Revlon Color Stay to the Rescue, I washed that off and put this on. Didn't even use a primer and it looks great. If you haven't tried this foundation and you like drugstore pricing, this really is an excellent foundation. It goes on beautifully. It's fuss-free. I'm in the color 200 Nude. Really, really love this one. The Blushing Blooms Palette from Ulta. This is probably, I'm pretty sure, the first Ulta product that I've tried. And I'll have to tell you guys, it just didn't impress me at all. The colorway is beautiful, but the color pad and the formula, gosh, it was really, really hard to get any color on my eyelid. I went back in several times, probably even more than you saw in the video because I cut a lot of it out trying to build up the color. And you can see, although the eyeshadow does look very, very pretty, it's very, very soft and subtle. If you like that look, if you like your shadows to be very, very sheer and not very pigmented, this might be a good choice for you. However, based on my experience, the ColourPop 9 Pan palettes, excellent pricing, better formula in my opinion than this by far. Even these little Wet n Wild 5 Pan palettes, these formulas are excellent and I swear these are like $3.99 at Walmart. So as much as I do love the colorway in this palette, I can tell you that the shadows just didn't perform the way I like them to. They went on nicely. They weren't patchy. They were easy to blend, but there was hardly any color there. For me, this was a pretty big fail. The Elf Bronzer in the color Forever Sun Kissed. I love this. And of course, the ColourPop Super Shock cheek blush in the color prenup. Love both of these. The Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I love this product. It is so fun to use. This is a more expensive product. I went ahead and dove in. I almost bought the sample size, but I thought, you know what? I just want to go ahead and get the standard size, and I'm really glad I did. This is going to last me a long, long time. The fun part about this particular product is it's so versatile. I can use it underneath my foundation, on top of my foundation, it just is a lovely little glowy product. So if you're looking for something fun to play with that's a little bit more higher end, I can tell you I really do like this one. Okay, you guys, a moment of truth time for the Ultra Creamy Tarte Concealer. I have to tell you what. <laughs> My under eyes still look amazing. It is blowing my mind. Not only is the coverage really, really good, but it's not creasing or caking up underneath my eyes. It looks beautiful. It was easy to blend. I love the color. I'm in 12 and it provides just the amount of brightness that I really like and it looks really, really good. Now, does it look better than some of the more drugstore priced under eye concealers? You know, I don't know, maybe a little bit. I don't think it looks as good as the Neutrogena. However, the Neutrogena doesn't have a brighter color. So it's kind of a back and forth thing right there. What I can say, and I've tried probably 25 or 30 concealers in the last few months, this is the best high-end concealer I've tried so far. Really, really loving it. I'm gonna to continue to use it. I'll keep updating you guys on how I feel about it, but right now, this Tarte Ultra Creamy Concealer, 
really loving it. I want to thank you so much for joining me today for this fun makeup for us over 50 gals with mature skin. Sometimes it's hard to find products that really work for us. Sometimes it's easy. Today was a little bit rougher. I hope you found this fun, useful, and helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you're interested in more makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 and over 60 women, stop by prettyover50.com. There's a lot more great information just waiting for you there. You guys know it just makes my day when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. Make it a great day. Wear your sunscreen and all. See you in the next video. Bye now.